Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Brawl Stars. Finally, it's been a few videos. I am happy to be joined here by my friend, my pal, and fellow content creator, none other than Power Bang, who also made this wonderful overlay, by the way. PB, how you doing, man? I'm so good. I was like waiting to jump in there for a second. Everybody's gonna be looking at me like, what's he doing with his hands? Um, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. You're welcome for making the overlay. Happy to be here as always. Fun to hang out on the channel. Let's let's do it. What are we talking about? Let's today? do it, man. Yeah, let's get right to the good stuff. Cause yeah. today, the gameplay is going to be secondary. The the main thing is going to be the conversation. Cause we're going to get da we're down to get brass deep. packs. We're going to get deep here, Ooh. and we're just going to put it all on the table. We want to talk about first. First, we're going to talk about will this game actually go global? Will it be released on Android, or will it be killed, as so many Supercell games are? Android. Then I've never heard anything about Android before. Yeah, no one's ever even put anything in the comments nope. about Android on any of my any of my videos. It's weird. No, but there've got to be some Android users, right? There's probably probably a few out there. Maybe they'll make themselves yeah. known. I don't know. Whatever. Maybe I don't know. But anyway, we're gonna talk about will it be released? We're gonna put percentages on it, and then we're gonna talk about all the events and what we like and what we don't like. So let's get right to it. I'm gonna put you on the hot seat first. What percentage do you think that Brawl and why will Brawl Stars be released or will it be killed? And why? You had to do that to me. Um, I have to do that, man. All right, man. If I had to give it a percentage, I'm gonna go with 83. Um, that that gives it a 83, five. 83, very precise. Yeah, five out of six chance that this game goes global. Um, everything that I've heard and seen have all been very positive indicators. Um, I feel like the game itself, like I'm still very much into playing it. I sunk some money into it. I sunk a lot of time into it. I'm still having a great time playing it. And while there are some obvious flaws in the game, which I think we can get into here shortly, uh, overall, it's such a great concept. It's so original uh, and fun that I just don't see how killing it is the right move here. Um, again, Supercell obviously has a history of just axing games, and games that you wouldn't even think were doomed to fail, it just didn't quite meet their standard. So I'm very curious to see as you know time rolls on here to see if this thing gets closer to a global release where we see maybe an Android build come out. I don't know, man. What, do you, what are your take uh, so far on the game? Like, what are your thoughts on percentage? I think you hit the nail on the head there, honestly. I, I think that it's, you know, I put it at like 80%. And, and the reason is, is I'm not convinced that it's polished enough to be, to really please Supercell. Like, right. I'm not sure how they feel about the game internally. I think they obviously like it. You know, we know our light, the, the community manager, Ryan, he's mm -hmm. he's really invested in the community already. Uh, they had the, some of the, you were there for the for the global launch or for the soft launch for the, in the mine and whatnot. So they've already invested a lot of resource and capital and, and just, you know, both money, obviously, which, you know, they're not afraid to kill games because of money. But on, on top of all that, it's doing well. It, it's well received. And it's number one on Canadian iTunes. Top the app store uh, on the chart says something. You know what I mean? That's yeah. Uh, it, definitely in Smashland, something to be a part of. Yeah, in Smashland they killed. In Smashland, never even sniffed number one in the Canadian iTunes chart. So I think that at the end of the day, the success alone will be enough to carry it into a global launch. Will it be as successful as? You know, will it be the next Clash Royale or Clash of Clans, or will it be the next Boom Beach? You know, a little right. bit of a difference in popularity. I'm not sure about that yet, but I, I do think that it will be launch, uh, will go to global launch as well. Absolutely. I, one thing I really like about the game is they've really taken a genre of gaming, like the MOBA genre, and they've brought it to like a consumable level for the average mobile gamer. Whereas in other games. The playtime is a little bit of an issue to sit down where you know you're going to have to sink at minimum 15 to 20 minutes into it, which that's not a knock on those games, but it's just a different level of commitment. Uh, Supercell mm -hmm. is typically more geared and focused towards the casual gamer, the person that's sitting down for fun just to tinker around on their phone, and being able in Brawl Stars to sit down and knock out a game or to have some fun in two, two and a half minutes, uh, that, there's something to be said for that, and I really don't feel that the gameplay lacks a whole lot, even though it's a smaller, like, bite size, I guess you would say. That's a really good point, PB, and I think that, think about it, right? I mean, that is the magic of Supercell, right? Because they, they rope you in by saying, you know what? We're going to go ahead and just make it. It's only two and a half minutes. You got time for this. 
And the next thing you know, you've already been playing for a half an hour. You know, just one more match, one more match. Oh, only two and a half minutes. Don't get me started Instead on the one of, more match conundrum. Right? I've been it, there way it, too yeah. many times. Oh, one more <laughs> match too. before I go to bed. I'm, I just got to get two more cups. Two more cups. And then it's like 5 a.m. and you're like, oh, no. You've tilted. I have to be up. Yeah, I'm <laughs> yeah. 100 cups oh. down. The, more, the w tighter I get, the worse I play. No, totally. Exactly. So, like, I think that a, that's a magic that, that, that other companies should probably take note of, right? But anyway, yeah, I, I'm with you there. I think that I love the fact that they did the, the Supercell version of a MOBA that doesn't require that 20 minute investment, like a game like Vainglory, which we both enjoy. Yeah, it's great. But it's game. a lot different. It's you know, a great you can't game. pick up Vainglory unless you know you have a half an hour free or whatever, you know? Absolutely. So. Uh, let's move into the events sure. because let's get what's let's start with you want to start with our, our favorite or our least favorite or what do you want to do? Let's start with our favorite, which I, I think okay. has to be smash and grab. I mean, it's right? the same. Yes. Smash and grab is 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 where it's at, man. I, I agree. I love I love the game mode. I love the fact that it's objective based uh, where you've got that centralized gem mine where it's spawning crystals. Teams are trying to, you know, capture and control those crystals, and if you die, obviously, they spill out onto the battlefield. It really reminds me of a objective-based game mode, like in a console game, like, you know, Call of Duty, like Domination or something. You're trying to capture an area and hold it, and it's very similar in Brawl Stars, where you're trying to capture that gem mine. So that's something that, for me, I find very appealing. There's no real way to, uh, you know, cheat or, you know, hedge, against, you know, I don't know. Like, some of the other game modes, we'll talk about that in just a minute. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's brutal. And, you know, Smash and Grab is the most inherently, like, balanced. You can play pretty much any brawler. Uh, you know, other game modes, you look at somebody who chooses, like, a, a particular brawler, and you're like, dude, what are you doing? Like, you're going to lose for sure. And Smash and yeah. Grab, that's not necessarily the case. I love it. Me too. You stole all my good points, dude. But yeah, I mean, you're right. It, it really, I love the fact that you can use any brawler in Smash and Grab. It feels fair. You don't feel at a disadvantage off the bat, you know, unless you're playing Immortus maybe. But <laughs> right. I, I joke though, I joke. Uh, but like, I, I really do feel that it is the perfect game mode, the only game mode that's perfect right now in the, in the game. Uh, the only event, I should say. Uh, so I'm also a big fan of Smash and Grab. And like, there's so many cool aspects to it. I really like how fast it is. I like mm -hmm. how fast paced it is. I like how the game can swing, but it seems right. fair when the game swings most of the time. It's because of a reason, not where, you know, you compare it to some other game modes and you're just like, wow, you know? Sure. Uh, well, like, to, so to give you an example, the countdown timer on Smash and Grab, I love it because, you know, it's all about how you've positioned your team. Like, are you controlling the key areas of the map? Are you controlling the choke points? And if you're not, you're gonna, you know, give the other team an opening to get a key kill where, you know, you drop your crystals, they take advantage, maybe make a push while you're dead and spawn. And I mean, it's it's based off of your gameplay. So for me, it's completely balanced. I love the fact that you have to maintain control and it's not just some fluke. I got to a certain number first and it's over, yep. you know, that you yep. have to basically assert your dominance and then get away. The only exception to that is Mortis. But again, that's all meta-based, and you can choose characters to counter Mortis pretty well. Um, it's all about, you know, that's on you, though, during the character selections process to, you know, put something that's going to be strong against any comp. I agree. I agree. And, and you're right. I mean, there's nothing better than the, the end of a smash and grab match that goes on for like over three minutes because you keep trading at the end, you know, you've got you, max you keep gems hitting on 10 the field. and 11. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's so many cool circumstances that can make for a really interesting uh, end game in smash and grab. So there's just nothing. I have no really and I, i'm one that can really come up with a critique if i if i oh, need sure. to but i can't come up with one thing that i would change about smash and grab so if we're, so. If we're rating smash and grab out of 10 stars you're giving it a 10 out of 10 i'm gonna give it a 10 i mean i think right. in the game itself i don't think you can get much better at least from what we've seen i i would also give smash and grab a 10 out of 10. um the only criticism that i have is the name itself smash and grab for me doesn't <laughs> not a big fan tickle my fancy <laughs> but at, at the same time <laughs> I don't care about any of that stuff. They can call the game yeah. whatever they want. They can call the, you know, I don't care. Like the pipe, you know, the Piper. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. The characters could be called whatever they need to be called. As long as the game's fun to play and that, you know, that feels good, I'm happy. I'll play it. Yep, I I'm with you. And uh, let's talk about Bounty next because that's really a the opposite for me. But before we get into it, one quick thing that I, I meant to mention earlier is that like the crazy thing about this game is that right now we're all noobs still yeah you know like think about where we were in clash of clans and clash royale and even boom beach if people played i never played but uh 
you know, early on, like we had no clue what we were doing. We we're just running around like idiots. Right. And that's what we're doing in Brawl Stars right now. Think of a year from now, if this game does go global, which we both think it will. Think about the year from now. Do you? Th how do you see strategy evolving in this game? Do you think it will be like, oh, we're going to run the triangle. We're going to run the the inverse whatever. Like, Do you think there will be strategy names going into a match and everybody will have a part to play? Do you think that's the direction it will go? Or do you think it, you know, like, it's, it's mind-boggling to try to hypothesize what's going to happen in terms of strategy. For sure. A couple of things that I see happening now already uh, with some of the top teams that are out there are you're seeing very commonly used compositions. You're seeing a lot of, like, Nita, Shelly, Poco. Um, you know, teams that are very good against all compositions. Um, mm -hmm. You see that happening already. Another thing that's happened is with the introduction of Piper into the meta. It's counteracted certain characters like Primo, where El Primo used to be one of the, the best characters in every game mode, bar none. And now he's been neutralized a little bit in pretty much everything but Showdown because of Piper's inclusion in, in most teams where she's able to take him down real quick from a distance before he can ever even get a punch off. So I think you're going to see two things happen. You're going to see common compositions come out uh, similar to Clash Royale where you've got, you know, three or four main decks uh, that you're seeing uh, used in competitive play. I think you're going to see something similar. Perhaps a little bit more expansive, though, in Brawl Stars, where, you know, you might see six, seven compositions that are really common per, for a particular game mode. And then you might, on top of that, see a certain way to play uh, a particular matchup as well, where, like you mentioned, the triangle, where you're kind of all hovering around the center of it, uh, the map, but space far enough apart where one brawler is not going to be able to take out the whole team with his spread, but you're able to fluidly rotate. Uh, you know, adjust if somebody's going to push on one side and, you know, flank from the other side if needed. And then you're going to also see things like columns where you've got like a left and right kind of flanking attacker um, and then one anchor kind of holding down the middle. And I mean, you're going to see strategy and the meta evolve over time, but I think those are some things right now uh, that we're seeing, you know, in the, the top of the, you know, leaderboard play, you're seeing common compositions and also common ways to play those compositions. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I, I can't wait to see what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, so Bounty, man, what, uh, I'll go first on this one. I think the Bounty is, is so I'm not a huge fan. Bounty is my second favorite, is and that's pretty sad to say because there's a big of a there's a big drop off after uh, Smash and Grab for me. Uh, I like Smash and Grab, and I don't mind Bounty. Most people hate Bounty, at least in our band, but I I don't mind it. I just wish that there was a reworking somehow of the of the star system because I mean it's pretty obvious a lot of people have mentioned this but you you get penalized for being a really good player and then getting bum rushed towards the end of the 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 match so I think that if they rework the star system a little bit maybe they give it a cap maybe they, they you know it the stars start to dissipate after time I mean there's a bunch of ideas that have been thrown out on Reddit and whatnot right uh, I think it will make the game mode much better also. You know, this goes for every game mode, but I think a new, a more frequent uh, addition of new and interesting maps really gives the whole event a new flavor, you know? Like, right. it, and, and different brawlers are good at it. Like, a weak brawler in an open area with not a lot of grass could be Crow. Crow could also be the best brawler in a whole, a big grassy area, you know, map. So, oh, absolutely. I think switching up the maps will, will go a long way as well. The snake uh, what say map, you? Crow's a beast. <laughs> yeah, the one with all grass. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as far as Love bounty goes, a lot of the same points echoed. My personal opinion is that I very much like the feel of a team deathmatch type of you know game mm -hmm. mode where you're going your team versus the other team, and the objective is to kill the other team. I think that that's uh, a very organic and like just raw game mode. Like I think that that's something that a lot of people are interested in. Now the scoring system leaves a lot to be desired. I can't tell you how many times that I have been the star player of the match on the losing team. And that's because <laughs> I will completely dominate like 10, 12 kills, and then I'll be the guy that, that dies last because they, they pin you in the corner. For whatever reason, your teammates can't protect you. And I'm speaking of playing with randoms, not like pre-made groups. Um, but when you play with randoms, that's the hard part is like, you know, you're you're pushing up and you know getting all these kills but then uh, one, like you could kill seven one star players in a row and then they kill you once and it's the same diff and to me that's yeah. just like bonkers like it doesn't make any sense at all 
So a couple of the ideas that I've heard, uh, one of which I kind of was, you know, hypothesizing in, in some of the chats, like, wouldn't it be cool if, uh, one idea was to have bankable stars, almost like you go out to the battlefield, kill some people, get a certain amount of stars, and if you can make it to a checkpoint, essentially, maybe back in your own spawn, you know, those are, like, stars that you keep. So, you know, it, it could, you know, I don't know if that would work, but some sort of concept like that where you can you can hold on to those stars and not give them up to the other team where your your progress is reset to one star so it decreases your value that being said uh i, I saw an idea i believe from kairos time and his was to have the stars dissipate after like 20 seconds or something like that so you're rewarded for maintaining control and not just trading kills and deaths uh, but if you maintain it for a while, your stars start to fall off, so you become worth less to the opponent, which I also liked that idea uh, as well. Yeah, I like the, I really like the Kairos time idea. Mm -hmm. I like the other idea too, but to me that sounds like it's, it's such a cool idea uh, that it's almost uh, not in the same theme of bounty. Like, I'd like to see that as a new event. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right. <laughs> I think it would be, there's a couple ideas that I have for new events that, that, I think that would work better with almost and like that one I feel like the emphasis would be less on killing each other uh, and more on sniping people and then running back and banking and yeah then, you know what I mean so yeah, yeah you yeah. have a lot of love people running away from the battlefield front lines versus towards it yes so yes the the bounty though like to, to sum up like my thoughts on it another thing that I dislike about the game mode is the uh, the characters that you're able to select, um, you feel a little bit hamstrung because using a close range brawler, it's very easy for the enemy to gang up on you. So for you to be able to get a kill, you've got to go toe to toe with somebody on the other team. And if you're going mm -hmm. to go toe to toe with somebody, oftentimes you're exposing yourself to do so. So it's very easy for all three of them to quickly shift attention to you get a kill okay you're done yeah you gotta you gotta kill but like you're no better off as far as score goes because you just traded yeah yeah i mean you're right and i agree with you uh but there's you know there is some strategy too mm -hmm. like using bull or, or primo to basically hide in in, in flank you know yep. and then you're screwed you know but but you're right it, there's definitely an advantage being arranged working for with sure. a good team we'll look uh, at but, piper for example like she's in almost every bounty composition like it's almost yeah. a requirement it's almost mandatory mm -hmm. to have a piper because she can just sit back you know get seven stars Snipe. collected and nobody yep. can nobody can get close if the team's any good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah you're totally right uh okay let's move on to to heist okay. uh we'll do showdown last so heist is uh, you can go first on heist all right heist i really like heist as far as the game mode goes i do not like the execution of heist um i feel like the balance is a little bit off um although it's getting better they've made some recent yeah. tweaks to maps where the safe is a little bit further back where for example mm -hmm. barley can't stand just out in no man's land and bomb your safe yeah yeah, yeah i mean yeah, that's yeah. gotten much better so props on you know making the adjustments there um i feel like the 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 what's it called the balance is still a little bit off though on a lot of maps they're either very defensively you know weighted or very easy to take out the safe just depending on which map you're playing um, so i definitely think that that needs some work um, the biggest complaint that i have is the amount of times that you're playing on offense or defense and the fact that you don't know what you're going to be playing when you select your character so mm -hmm. they either need to figure out a way to select your character after they've determined which side you're going to be on offense or defense or they need to allow a game mode where you play offense and defense and then take the team that uh, did it faster um, as far as the tiebreaker is concerned for, you know, the overall victor. So I feel like, you know, maybe heist is a little bit longer of a game mode, but I don't feel that playing just one side is, is right. Because there's a lot of times where people select a brawler where like, oh, yeah, I'm going to attack the safe with this. I'm going to be able to bust through the wall, you know, with this character. And then it's like, oh, I'm playing defense. Never mind. This is completely worthless. Yeah, I mean that those are good points. I feel like I'm not sure you should be able to change your character because uh but that you're right. The fact that you can't it just it gives a really limited brawler pool of brawlers mm -hmm. who would be good or serviceable on both offense and defense. That's why you see like but I, in in a way that's kind of cool because they're also brawlers that don't necessarily get a ton of love in the other, you know, in right. some circumstances like Dynamite and in uh and uh, barley. Colt but is a big one. I feel like is very Colt, useful in heist. Bull, it doesn't have yeah. a lot of 
place in other game modes but what i see in a lot of the brawlers that are good like they have to have a super that is able to destroy obstacles yes that's the, that's the key right you have to be able to yeah. destroy or jump or jump or yeah but like, like crow and crow and primo are, are not bad either exactly the jump but yeah the piper uh, piper one is okay on on heist because she can jump and clear you know cover ground but also her ult or her super rather destroys you know where she's standing but yes you have to push up to that point to begin with so it's a little bit yeah. difficult. The thing I like about Heist is, so I don't have any big problems with Heist mm -hmm. after they changed the the defensive because right. it, it was almost like on almost like an automatic loss unless you have like a an absolute all star team. Yeah. Uh, back in the day, now I feel like defense maybe, and and who am I to say? But I almost feel like there's a just a very slight disadvantage still on defense. Like whenever I'm on defense, I still don't feel good about it. You know, I'm just like, oh okay, and we're on defense. Uh, maybe that's just human nature that you want to be on offense, but uh, at the same time, I still feel like maybe a little tweaking to make defense a little bit easier. However, the thing I do like about Heist is it's really the only game mode or the only event that is, like you nailed it earlier, that is extremely predicated on charging up your super ASAP. And, and yeah. you know, so like, I really liked that version of Heist where there were you were walled off. You know, because right. if you, as a defender, if you just kept distance and tried to give a little support fire, it wouldn't it wouldn't allow the the offense to get their super built up. And when you do that, they're just killing time. That's you exactly know? So you're I, killing clock, trying to make yeah. it to where you know you hide and you know you pick and pop them apart. You know, and then yep. of course they send in a bowl or two or whatever if that if that's what the matchup dictates. And then you know you can't kill them fast enough, and then you get overwhelmed. And then you're in trouble. So, I mean, yeah, it kind of depends on matchups for sure. But I, I agree. I like the one where you were walled off. Um, I like mm -hmm. the ones where you're kind of daring the opponent. Like, shoot shoot me through this wall. You know, I dare you. Because then, yeah, I'll yeah. probably die this round. But now we've got, you know, more than one choke point to try to make our way through. So they can't focus all of their efforts on that central choke point. So I really like the strategy yeah. in Heist. I just wish it were more even like when you play it. Because you see a lot of people complaining that, oh, I've gotten defense eight times in a row. And like, that's not yeah. fun. No, 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 not at all. Uh, okay, we're running a little bit low on footage. So <laughs> so let's keep moving here. Uh, showdown, because there's probably a lot to mention here. Showdown, let me just hit the big bullet points. I used to love Showdown. Now I don't even touch it anymore, man, with the, with the teaming up. And I'm sure a lot of that will be solved with a larger player pool, but the higher you get in trophies, the more teaming up there are there is in Showdown. Yep. And now it's to the point where, you know, 50-50 for me at my trophy level, that there's right. going to be a team of four or five or three, even three, it doesn't matter, you know? Like, as long as, it, and sometimes, like I said, there's teams of, of five people. So oh, I, I just went up against one yesterday. Five you're guaranteed, standing back to yeah. back. You're guaranteed a negative trade unless you get inc incredibly lucky or a negative uh, trophy value off the event. So I don't know what to do about Showdown uh, other than bringing in, you know, a few million players to make it more difficult to, to team up. Uh, what about you? I think the players pool is going to help it to an extent. But yeah, I agree. I That's the one, like, I feel like some of the other problems we pointed out, like in Bounty and Heist, I feel like those are very easy to programmatically solve. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a matter of making a decision to do so amongst the dev team. Now, the showdown one is unfortunate because it's the one game mode that is individual in nature. Uh, it's solo play. It's how good are you at a particular character with no one supporting you all on your own, you know, one brawler against the world, <laughs> you know, like that's what that game mode's about to me. And it's unfortunate because you're really not able to prove yourself anymore because there's so many teams like I have faced. I don't know how many teams over the last week or so, but I'm at the point as well where it's like, I don't really show down much anymore. Like it's fun, it's yeah. awesome, but I just get my coins and move on. And I know some people at really high trophy levels, like higher than myself, because I'm not that high. Um, I've been splitting my time across all brawlers essentially to do guides and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So um, I still am, an, I'm not at the point where I have to get like third place or higher to score points at all. I still need like fifth maybe. And that's very doable for me in most occasions. But like you said, if there's four or five players in a team and they're not completely horrible, uh, you're going to be killed by that team and they're going to figure out amongst themselves who's the top, you know, one through five. 
So yep. it's it's too it's too tough right now to to compete, and I, I don't know how they fix it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, this would not fix the problem, but it would put a Band-Aid over it. It's just not let people in the same band be in the same showdown. Obviously, you can still circumvent that. You can hop out of the band. Sure. It doesn't really, but it makes it a little bit more difficult, you know? And I think they, uh, didn't they do that recently or they were talking about doing that recently? Maybe they did. I don't, I don't know. I haven't played it in yeah. like a week. <laughs> I, I don't know either, but I know there yeah. was some talk about perhaps limiting your own band's involvement in the same showdown. Another thing that I feel like uh, would be nice to see is some variety in the characters that are showing up, the brawlers. Like, I mean, I was yeah. in a showdown uh, two days ago where there were, I guess, so me, and I, I don't even remember what I was playing. It was probably Spike or Piper or something, and I was playing against eight Shellys and a bull. And it's just like, <laughs> what? Like, I was everywhere that's it, I man. went, it's, it was Shelly and Bull. And then, it's Shelly, Bull, and Primo, man. Yeah. That's that's showdown in a nutshell. And if you're poor you trying to level up, trying to trophy right. up your dynamite, and you're like, I just pray that you don't start anywhere near one of them because they can kill you in a second, you know? Exactly. So it was, you, you know, you're, you're playing with 20% of the pool of brawlers, and it would be really cool to see some sort of forced mixture of different mm -hmm. brawlers go into you know the matchmaking somehow where oh you're not going to have you know more than three or four of the same character just just due to the way matchmaking works i think that would be a cool change uh to the way things are yeah 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 that, that's totally the same thing with duplicate brawlers in other game modes yep. i think that's something that they'll eliminate once there's a bigger player pool as well again i agree uh, you're gonna see a lot of changes in, administratively and just like the way things are structured after the game launches globally if we get to that mm -hmm. point uh simply because right now they're worried about like matchmaking times queue times um yep. you know they don't want to wait five minutes in order to meet a certain set of guidelines that when they you know essentially multiply the player pool by three thousand times like it's not going to be an issue i got a few rapid fire questions for you Hit before me. we end this off you ready okay mm -hmm. no, they're going to be tough ones no they're not number one favorite brawler spike least favorite Ricochet. Should accounts who account share be banned? Yes. <laughs> uh, and okay, that's all my rapid fire questions. <laughs> but I also have one, I also have one last point though. Right. Is is I think that uh, just about the game in general. I think that the progression is okay, but I think that it feels too slow. Do you agree? Like, maybe it's like placebo, but it, and it's far be it from me to complain. I, I gem my account. To match, I was just gonna say we're dirty gemmers. We're far far. We from are the dirty gemmers. That need to be complaining like, about this, but on behalf of the people, right? Like, yeah. Um, Let I, me I, articulate that better, though. I feel like there's 15 levels mm -hmm. on each of the three categories. 45 elixir. I think. Yep, a five. So the, yeah, so five elixir each. I think that if there was 100 levels and you got way more from your brawl boxes and you could upgrade much more i think it would just feel like oh yeah i am making progress i like that Whereas, right i like that um it might be a little bit harder on the math side of things like when they yeah. go to say okay you know brawlers base hit points multiply by whatever amount of elixir you know what i mean like it might be a little bit yep. more difficult on the math side of things rather than having just like five preset you know multipliers yeah um, but at the same time, I, I agree 100%. I, I think that more is better. Um, and giving people the impression that, oh, I can I can maybe spread around the amount that I'm upgrading. Like, I don't have to dump all of my loot into a particular brawler and then it's gone. You know, after just three, yeah. three or four elixir or whatever, it's like, oh, man, where'd it go? It would be cool to spread that around a little bit, maybe upgrade a couple of your favorite brawlers simultaneously. Because I feel like right now you have to, you know, you really have to focus on one at a time and mm -hmm. you know determine oh i want to upgrade uh piper first you know like and and then yeah, i don't know so I, I like that idea i think uh having higher caps with more stuff would feel better um it doesn't yeah. necessarily make a difference but i just think it makes yeah. it, it gives people that warm fuzzy that they're looking for yeah i mean suffice it to say a ton like you said a ton of things will change in mm -hmm. this game i mean you look at clash royale in the beginning is you know, we had to pay to play. It cost gold to play matches. You look at Clash of Clans in the beginning, it cost gold to, like, uh, brew spells, you know? And uh, so yeah, there's so many different changes. 
uh, that I anticipate will come, hopefully, right. if it goes global. But uh, yeah, we touched on a lot today, man. Do you have any, obviously you guys, I should have said this in the beginning, crap, but you guys should subscribe to Power Bang Gaming if you haven't already. He has fantastic guides for almost every brawler now, like quite a few at least, right? We're gonna be rolling out the, the remaining set of brawlers here over the, the course of this week. So yeah, stay tuned for that. All right. Cool, and I know you're gonna shout out uh, the wiki that I'll link for you guys. Sure. That uh, that we are really excited about. Great website, Brawl Stars uh, Wiki. Uh, www.playbrawlstars.com. Yeah. There you go. Is that there good? you go. All right. Yeah, that was perfect, man. Uh, any other shout outs? Anything like that? We should uh, we should be aware of before we let you go. Shout out to the homies from Elite Gaming, man. Elite Nation. Yeah. What's up? Going um, strong, man. Going yeah, strong. Yeah, do, doing well. Got a good group of people there, guys. If you guys are interested, hit us up in game. Uh, just, you know, ch check the trophies where, where our lowest guys are at. And if you, if you got more than that, apply. You never know. Yeah, apply right in game. We'll uh, we'll kick somebody for you. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe PB. Maybe, Maybe PB. I don't know. <laughs> All right, dude. Well, thanks so much for coming on, man. Always a pleasure to chat with you. I'm sure I'll have you on uh, back soon. You better or else. I know where you live. I certainly will. So a huge shout out to Power Bang. Like I said, I love chatting with this guy. He's like a wealth of knowledge and just so fun to, I could listen to him talk on the game for hours. So I wanted to thank all of you guys for watching. It really means a lot. I want to thank my YouTube partner, Bren Chong. Check out his information in the description below. And with that, we will, we will sign off with Power Bang. I am Ash coming at you today. As always, take, take care, care, guys. guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye.